Chris Contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Ty Conte. And she is joined by negative one of the dark order. Ty Conte looking for two straight wins here on Elevation. A week ago, she went over Ashley Vox. I love negative one when he's out there, you know, you really, you can see how much Ty really enjoys him out there. Kind of boosts her spirits, her number one fan. And her opponent from Indio, California, Ray Lynn. Ray Lynn coming off of a loss last week to Abaddon on elevation, but uh, we were very impressed with a former OVW women's champ. Absolutely nice athlete, but you know she went up against Abaddon. That actually had me scared. Yeah, that's uh, that. She's going to go up against a completely, obviously different wrestler here in Ty Conte with all her backgrounds and Martial many different, arts. yeah, wow. many different forms of fighting. Yeah, yeah, it, it's pretty apparent here, Paul, that uh, that Lynn's approaching this match a lot differently than yeah. she did a week ago. And, and, and I don't blame her. I mean, this is a nice collar and elbow tie up. They're feeling each other out. Took advantage right there. Maybe a little hair pull, maybe not. Nice control of the arm, top wrist lock. Always one of my favorites. Bend her over the knee, add that? more pressure to that shoulder. Oh, there's a hair pull, stand back up. Hey, if the ref doesn't stop you, you can get away with it. And the referee is Aubrey Edwards on this. Now she's calling for the break. And that Ooh, just kind of woke her up here. That might have just woken up Ty right yes, there. Yes, sir. A reversal, Ty drops down. Here goes Lynn up against the ropes. Ty picking her up, look at this. Oh, he dropped her back down in. Oh, there's that judo moves. Yep. That's such a good judo throw. And you're gonna go, because you're, wherever your elbow goes, the rest of you's gonna follow. Missed a pump kick that time, got tied up in the ropes. Here goes Lynn, she does not miss the drop kick, and she'll cover here. One, only a one count. You gotta figure that Ty's a black belt in judo. She's got an advantage in this kind of situation. Head to head, just getting heated up, a little angry. Nice Lynn. block. Yep. Lind. Duck under, waist lock, spinning Whoa. back kick. That spinning back kick found its mark. Now, we talk so much about. Oh, wow. And they're... answered with a spinning back kick. Yeah. Talk so much about the ability of Ty Conte, but Lynn. Wow. Trained nice. and lived in the marvelous dojo in Japan. Wrestled on multiple tours of China, so she has had plenty of experience. There's negative one watching on. And both ladies are down, and there's the count administered here by Aubrey Edwards. Let's see who's going to get their feet first here, if any. Yeah. Oh, wow, nice forearm shiver. Wow, that one found his mark right because of the jaw. Now a slap here by Lynn. You look at Ty, she's getting anger and anger every time she gets hit. Her whole demeanor changes when she gets going. Repeated punches that time, forearm shots by Lynn, and Ty Conte's got her in a full Nelson reversal to a full Nelson that time from a standing switch, and another one, and yo, and two a cutter. Nice. Or a stunner, if you will, and here's a pickup by Ty Conte. Whoa, there you go. He likes that around the world backbreaker. Around the world backbreaker. They're chanting Ty's name here, and let's see what she'll do now. He, well, oh boy. <laughs> she was patting herself on the back and then a, a little paid too for it. soon. Wow, a lot too soon, man. <laughs> you know, I was really impressed, though, with these girls were countering each other and it shows their wrestling experience and they're familiar and how to get out of certain maneuvers. That, that was nice to see. When you think about Conti not being exposed to pro wrestling for until 2016, didn't know anything about pro wrestling. She has certainly really taken to it quickly. Actually, like I say, just like a duck to water. Yeah, absolutely. And now, rolls her in. Here comes Conti again. Ray Lynn in trouble, trying to get to her feet. Conti perched on top here. And Ray Lynn saw it, moved out of the way. Conti rolls through. She turns her head, oh, looks at the referee. Kick. Wow. And paid for it with a pump kick. And Conti's going to do it again. This is Run with on. a running knee strike that time. Knee lift, if you will. Oh, there oh, it is. That's all she wrote right there. That's a hammerlock DD tie. Yeah. 
DD impressive. tie, baby. DD tie. All she wrote. Thanks for coming. No winner of this match. Do not go to the pay window. Ty Conti. She's undefeated here on Elevate since she's now eight and two in singles competition. Here it is again, Paul. Boom, it was the right. stunner. And then the running knee strike. And then here it is, the DD tie. Yeah, I also heard the tie is also getting some training in buoy ties. So it explains the high running knee. Ty Conte, negative one to celebrating the win. Keep your eyes up front there, kid. Yeah, no doubt. Absolutely. I think you actually just noticed in the strap. Big win for Ty Conte to begin this week. Here our second week of elevation, Tony Schiavone and Paul White. Here's our triple main event tonight. Orange Cassidy goes up against the Hollywood Hunk, Ryan Nemeth, all ego, Ethan Page. He'll be in one on one competition of number five of the Dark Order, Alan Angels. And then we're going to see Layla Hirsch get her shot on one of the top women in the world, Ryo Mizunami. That's all coming up in our triple main event. Paul, how you feel week two, bud? I am excited for week two, and especially tonight, because we're going to have some amazing AEW action on Elevation. And let's go to the ring. Our next match, here's Justin Roberts. This bout is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Dustin Rhodes from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 180 pounds, Big Shotty Lee Johnson. Big Shotty Lee of the Nightmare Family with Dustin Rhodes making his way to the ring for this next, next match up here on AEW Elevation. He was featured in our AEW Showcase a week ago. This week we're gonna feature Red Velvet, by the way. And now let's go back to Justin Roberts. And his opponent from Battleground, Alabama, weighing 182 pounds, Adam Priest. Young man of Battleground, Alabama, looking for his first win here in AEW. So here's a good shot. Right he, away, coming in aggressive. Yeah, they, he's got to, and especially since Lee is starting to pick up a little bit of momentum here in AEW, Paul. Yeah, you can definitely feel that. The confidence in his eyes is a lot better, too. From the collar and elbow to the full arm drag, and now twist on it, and nice Lee just... Front roll, hip up, reverse. So, yeah, he's one of the fastest competitors, speediest competitors, really, in AEW. He can go side to side as quickly as anyone. Nice snap there, rear chin lock. Looks like Adam Priest has a little bit of an amateur background the way he tried to get out of that. Sure, tried to roll right out of it. Yeah. Trying to scoot out of it as well, but Lee's got it hooked on. Lee knew to sink that elbow in deep under the chin. Rear chin lock again, this time to a side headlock, and Lee oh, with a headlock oh, takeover. Take yep. In Leg face. scissor. How about that? Nice. Trying to get out of it, does so. Got to, has him in a pinning predicament here, one, two. Nice bridge. Both men coming up hard that time, and it's a pretty good uh, test of strength there. Test of wills, one, two on a backslide. And I think only a one count nice that time. Nice deep arm drag, real nice. Oh, and a counter back. How about Adam Priest, man? Adam Priest having a good little show, and I think he might be learning, earning Lee's respect here a little I, bit. I think he's earning everybody's respect. Adam Priest coming out. And Lee, a member of the uh, Nightmare family, as we've talked about, certainly with the with the backing of the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes, and, well, at one time, QT Marshall. Not so sure about that now. There you go. Oh, look at that. Oh, there you go. That might not have been the smart move. I appreciate Adam Priest being a competitor, but. Wow, man, a good go know. behind it. He just hammered him. You know, he lost a chance to make a friend tonight. Well, I don't think he was worried about that. Adam, <laughs> only 25 years of age, five years, though, in the ring. And he sent him in, and boy, came running with a cross edge chop. European big here. Uppercut. Wow, a big one, man. He really snuck that one in there right under the chin. Yeah, big shot. Lifted shoddy. him up. Big shoddy Lee. And you hear Dustin encourage him in the corner to fight back, but right now, Priest is is taking over this match here. He sure is. Nice snap suplex. And tries to cover one. I'd like to see that, Paul. Snap suplex, go ahead and try to get the win. Do it again. I'd appreciate if he hooked the leg on the cover. 
I mean, Lee Johnson's the kind of guy you're not just going to cover with a chest to chest. You really want to hook a leg. Lee got some distance between him with that chop, but Priest goes right back with a kick again to the head. And a Priest. Very aggressive. That's a great find the leg. There he's got it. How about that? All Lee, right. nowhere to go, man. He just he got elbowed the side of the head. Oh, a, a version of a swinging neck breaker that time. One, two. Yeah, it was like a leg sweep with a neck breaker. Very wow. good. And that's got Lee. Lee just shoved him off. And that brings Priest right back again. I tell you, we know about Big Shotty Lee. We talked about the losing streak that he had, about talking about what the first win did for him here in AEW. And now he's uh, being put to the test here to keep that streak alive. Oh, Priest had no defense for that at all. He was caught in the corner. He saw it coming, and nothing he could do about it. That's what we call a receipt. And Lee comes back again, opened up, catches the foot. And it's a gurry. How about that? You owe me a beer and a pick up. <laughs> and a belly to back. One, two, and a two count. That was a very nice and very quick belly to back. They're chanting big shotty. Adam Priest now trying to refocus here and come up with another game plan. We've got to wonder if the turmoil that's going on with Dustin is affecting Lee. Well, we have with, yeah, absolutely, because QT was one of his big supporters. And so the problems that exist in the Nightmare family are certainly has to really uh, get on the mind, great on the mind of. Kind of like if the parents are fighting, the kids get in trouble in school. The, exactly. <laughs> and Lee nice with Larry. A, yes, running Larry's making two of them. And Lee now trying to get that momentum back, but there goes Priest sending him in. He turned the wrong way that time, and it cost him. And here comes Big Shotty Lee. High with, risk move. Over the wow. top. He's feeling the fire now. He's wide and awake, and he's in it. It all started with a kind of a misdirection that time, and Priest got caught up the wrong way. Lee took advantage of it. And now Lee tries to hook him up. But Priest got him hooked. One, two, and Lee, boy, barely got out of it. One, two. I mean, that was so close. That was real close. Roll him up again. Got a waist lock. Pick up here. Has him up top and just throws him in the corner. And now has him hooked. This could be his move. He's got the leg hooked. He picks him up. Oh, boy. The brain dog. One, two, three. And believe me, that dog is brain. Woo. The winner of this match. Big shot Lee Johnson. Let them know how I feel with one shot. How about that? You can see the head of Adam Freeze crack. Right on the back of the knee. Right on the back of the knee. My God. Here it is again, Paul. Watch this. Oh. I, you know what? That brain dog is serious. Here it is again, a third angle, man. And that got the win for Shotty Lee. His third win. Here in AEW, after going 0 and 29 to start. And now let's go to our colleague standing by. Here's Dasha Gonzalez. Ryan Nemeth, you have a huge opportunity here tonight during AEW Dark Elevation against Orange Cassidy. How are you getting prepared for somebody of that caliber? Oh, well, look, I'll be the first one to admit Orange Cassidy is very cool. The hair, the shades, the denim, the hands, and the pockets. Um, I'm sorry, I can't even pretend. As a trained, athletic, serious, professional wrestler, nothing disgusts and offends me more than someone like Orange Cassidy. Orange <laughs> may think he's pretty cool, but I will show him tonight that he is certainly no. The following is a tag team match set for one fall. A 20 minute time limit approaching the ring at a combined weight of 453 pounds. Griff Garrison, Brian Pillman Jr., the 
Varsity Blonde. Love what Griff Garrison and Brian Pillman Jr. the Varsity Blondes bring to the ring. Excitement, intensity, youthful exuberance, if you will. I've actually been following Pillman on Twitter. I used to be very good friends with his dad back in the day. And their opponents had a combined weight of 330 pounds, a team of Fuego, Del Sol, and Jake St. Patrick. It's pretty funny to think, you know, I knew nothing. You knew nothing. <laughs> just let it go. Just block that out. Just block that out. <laughs> A waist lock here by Fuego Del Sol, who, by the way, was trained by the Armstrong family. And that says a lot. But oh, look yeah, at it how, does look, Bullet Bob train him? Yes, sir. Look at how uh, long and and agile Griff Garrison is, yeah, man. He's a, he's a heck of an athlete. You know, they got those long limbs. He starts filling out, gets some more size on him. You know, you're, you're looking at a potential AEW World Heavyweight Champion. Fuego Del Sol has come close to winning his past two matches by connecting on his devastating tornado DDT. Let's see if he can pull up the nose here, so to speak, and get in the win column for his team. Yeah, he told me he was the master of the tornado DDT. Well, did he tell you that? Yes, he did. See Brian Pillen on the outside. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I did explain to him. I said, if you're going to call yourself the master of something, you actually have to beat somebody with it. That's so, right. Well, uh, I don't think he liked my response. Well, we talk about confidence, how a very, very important confidence is in wrestling and in the ring, and you got to have it. And that time, Garrison just laid him out. Here comes uh, Jake St. Patrick in now. Five years' experience in the ring, and we're going to get Brian Pillman. Junior in the ring. Just think, I've known Brian Pillman Jr. since he was probably about 10 years old. Brian Pillman, who, you know, we had a chance to talk to him recently, and we, we talked about his, nice. you know, he, always knowing that he wanted to be a pro wrestler, but then he went and he said, you know what, I'm going to have something to fall back on. I'm going to get a degree in business information systems, which he did at Northern Kentucky. So there is something to fall back on, but he's following his passion, following his dad's footsteps. I get that. Yeah, but he was smart enough. He learned from his dad too. You got to have a backup plan. Sure. Yeah. And that's the thing about our industry that people don't understand. You know, you can be here today and gone tomorrow. Injuries are could happen at any moment. In one time in this one slip up out of the ring, over the top rope, the wrong way, and it's over. Absolutely. One, one high risk maneuver. I've had many friends that have gone down that road, unfortunately. Uh, attack nice. has been made to good Garrison. teamwork. Wow. wow. Use that momentum to amplify that big boot. Pillman goes out after that big boot, and down on the floor goes Jake St. Patrick. I gotta tell you, I like the varsity blondes. I really do. They're young, they're energetic, their teamwork is flowing really nice. Their confidence looks good. I just want to see him get a little bit, maybe a little bit meaner. And the hair is flowing nice as well. Uh, the hair's well. I'm not going to talk about the hair because I don't even hair, have any hair to talk about. Well, so. Griff's got plenty, and, and Pillman sporting that mullet. Yeah, <laughs> which I love. Hey, you know Bring what? Bring back you, the mullet, buddy. You, you got to oh. love the fact that Pillman's got enough hair that you can cut it in a mullet, and it still looks better than my hair did. <laughs> Great leg drop over the top, slingshotted in that time by his partner, and here's Griff Garrison. You know the story of a mullet, right? In the front's business and party in the back. Uh, okay, I didn't know that one. <laughs> you're, you're, you're teaching me so much on this show. Oh, I've got enough redneck lingo. I can keep you busy for years. <laughs> and I didn't know you were from South Carolina. I am. I should have known. Well, I, I should have known, but I'm, I should have known. I'm from South Carolina. Wow, how about that? Small town called New Holland, South Carolina, just outside of Aiken. Yeah, we had a flash and yellow light. There you go. How about that? Nice shot by Brian Pillman Jr. Man. That's the thing. Brian Pillman, Pillman Sr. was also a big fan of the chop. Yes, he was. Been Many. A couple are. of World War Threes where I've been chopped by Brian Pillman Sr. And a spinning neck breaker. Yeah, nicely done. Great teamwork here. Garrison still the legal man of the ring. He goes with a big leg drop as the man was really on his side. One, two, and a two count. And that time, uh, St. Patrick was trying to roll out of it. But Garrison still hit it. Smart and move on Garrison's point. Get between the opponent and his corner. Get him back to your own corner. Keep control. And keep him sandwiched in the corner. Here, Pillman's going to hit the ropes and come in with a running Larry at that time. Notice how Pillman wanted to get a long start but stayed out of the other corner. Right. That's what I like about the varsity blondes. They're smart enough to cut that ring in half. To have any real success in a tag team, 
You want to cut your opponent's ability to tag in a fresh partner. Eliminate that ability, wear him down, and pin him and beat him. Rolls oh, through. Leg crab. A half crab it. Has him up and, uh, and really look. digging for that tag. He knows he's in trouble right now. If he tags Fuego, the, the, the momentum could definitely change. Now just sitting in deep here on the lower back, small of the back, and there you see Patrick trying to just oh. power his way out of it. Nicely done by Patrick. He rolls through and makes the tag. And here comes Come Fuego. Fuego. Fuego hitting the ropes so quick, so fast, and picked up. Sends Pillman in to grip Garrison. Head to the midsection. Fuego, here he goes. Well, it looks like he was going to try that DDT, maybe. He was kind of calling for it, but Pillman escaped. Fuego stumbles away. Sends him in. Has a tag been made or not? Missed. Oh, oh, there it is. Nails a spin into the yes. Tornado DDT. There it is, a spinning Tornado DDT, and Griff Garrison comes away. And that was a spinning knuckle sandwich. Yeah, he, the discus punch. Wow, what is this match? The varsity blow. Well, he got that Tornado DDT on, but it really signaled the end for Fuego Del Sol and Jake St. Patrick because it was the, the discus punch. That time by Griff Garrison that got the win. The Varsity Blunts now have won now six of their last nine matches and overall are eight and nine here in AEW. So then Garrison could say that he's the master of the discus punch. Yes, he could say that. The Varsity Blunts win it. Yeah, things looking real good here, Butch. You're getting the job done. Keep it up, huh? Kidding me? Why can't I get in? Hey, you know the rules. Go get yourself a jacket. When all I'm black, uh, I'm a stats man myself, and the stats say we should put it on red. <laughs> We're the Dark Order. Are you ready to play? <laughs> I'm ready to win. The acclaimed, top of the chain, so I bet you know the name. Getting all the fans Yo. entertained. The acclaimed, Yo. running in the game, and we in our Listen. own lane. Everybody Listen. saying that they want to be I'm playing the max. And I'm with the acclaimed, yo, Ryzen, you should get a different name. Maybe like bitch, you know, something less lame. Or maybe like water, cause you going down the drain. You got a losing streak, a streak in your beard. And I heard you go streaking because you're weird. I'm so hot, I could attract your dad. Your red hair got you looking like a maxi pad, you little bitch. Yeah, back up, back him up, Paul. He's on his period. Well, Ryzen, is he done? Okay, I guess he is. Ryzen did not take too kindly to that, as no one would. I mean, obviously, uh, in his background, Ryzen is an ordained reverend through the Universal Life Church. Max Caster's opponent from Hellgate, Florida, weighing 212 pounds, Ryzen. So, I know what you're gonna say. What the hell? Okay, <laughs> but I'm just going by the notes here. Yeah, okay. I, uh, right now I, I'm trying to figure out the rap that Max Caster just had. And okay. then now you threw me for a loop because yep. Ryzen looks like a demon, but you're telling me he's a priest. He, that's that's right. Okay. Yeah. Made his pro wrestling debut at What the Hell Saloon in Arvada, Colorado. So there you go.
All right. Uh, that's and, and this uh, again. We go back to what elevation is all about. Giving someone like Ryzen. So is Ryzen like? Or is, is his church like the Bible, the one written by Anton Lavey? You, I don't. I can't answer that. I don't know. But the fact is, he's trying to make his way here in AEW, trying to elevate his career. We've seen Platinum Max Caster. We've seen he and Anthony Bowman. Bowen uh, form a great team. And uh, Caster has been very successful in, in singles competition here as of late. He's 4 and 1 in singles competition here in 2021. Looks like he tweaked that knee a little bit. I believe so. And he's stumbling around here as. Ryzen's smart enough to go to that injury. You telegraph an injury, the opponent goes after it. Smart play. And a Steve! Oh, boy. wow. That was a lariat with authority. Ryzen went down hard. And Caster, boy, that, that jaw stuck out like he's angry about what happened to the knee early on. And here he's going to work on the arm here. And back they go towards the ropes. Pick up by the arm and they're right across the top. Using the top rope on well, the arm, boy. You know, Caster, is, his wraps are, are pretty, pretty cool, pretty novel. But take that away, and, and the guy's got a lot, a lot of talent. He a lot of talent and a mean streak. Yeah, the mean streak. Qualified for the face of the revolution ladder match when he beat number 10 of the Dark Order, Preston Vance, on dynamite. No doubt his biggest singles win of his career. Has won 11 of 13 tag team matches with Anthony Bowens, as he claimed. Working that knee, good job on rising yeah, part. Stay right with it. I mean, you Back heard it earlier. Knee. Get that hamstring. You know that's the best way to take an opponent is cut the hamstrings. Castro and Bowens challenged the Young Bucks a couple of months ago, the World Tag Team Champions, and a two count. So they've had their shot, and and certainly there is no question they have uh, they've impressed a lot of people here in AEW. Plus, he's a pretty, pretty darn good songwriter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he writes his own beats and lyrics. Well, writing your own beats and lyrics is good, but I love the fact that Caster uses his raps to get into his opponent's head. Yeah. If you can make your opponent mad, <laughs> if you can make your opponent sad enough, they'll yeah. make a mistake. <laughs> right. You and know? that's exactly what they did. He, he got Ryzen really all upset to begin this match. Yeah, you know, it's basically he's the pro wrestling's Paul Simon. Yes, he is. There you go. And for those of you out there that don't know who Paul Salmon is, shame on you. Here's a hook. Maybe vertical suplex. Blocked nicely that time. Put the leg in there. Ryzen going to try. Inside cradle. He got him covered. One of two. And he got a two count. And again, like we've said so many times, going back to the mat, many, many wrestlers and again, back to the arm drag into the hammer lock. Caster now has him hooked. Oh, face first. One, two, no. Boy, that was real arrogant cover. Didn't even really have the shoulders press. And there, Ryzen just rises his midsection out of that. Oh, nice kick to the back of the head. Definitely with Jar Ryzen's thinking a little bit right now. You know, I see that a lot with the younger generation, with the lazy covers, the arrogant covers. Yeah, it's you know? like they may want to make a make a statement. I mean, here they are in Elevation, mm -hmm. all the eyes watching Elevation, listening to us, and they feel, okay, well, I I can't just win. I've got to make a statement. Right. And, and well, so, I got a showboat. Right. And, and you know what? Some people can get by with that. The veterans can get by that with that. Well, a veteran has more experience to know when the job is really done. You know, it's just like a baker, whether you're baking a cake. Sometimes the first few times the cake's not cooked all the way. Okay. That happens the same way with an experience in the ring. You get enough baking time in, you know when the cake is done. That was a version of a dragon screw leg whip that time by Ryzen, and he goes back to the attack. Imagine that, Ryzen knowing a dragon screw leg lock. How about that? Something else, huh? Yep. Yeah. It's over! It's over, he says. He goes up top, bounces up to the middle, turnbuckle, tries a springboard moonsault, but one too many bounces that time because Caster was one step ahead. A big arm drag. Deep takedown. arm drag. 
and ducks out of the way. He's got him hooked. Oh, wow. There it is. Yeah, not yet. He's not done yet. Nice solid kick to the back, working that shoulder and that arm. Almost a version of the top wrist lock. Uh, looks like Ryzen uh, right now, I'm, I'm wondering where he's getting his faith to get out of this. Yeah, right we'll, we'll see. Well, he just moved to the bottom rope. Paul Turner telling. Caster still didn't let go, just pulled him away. Face first. Oh, boy. Face first, and the knee is in trouble here. Paul Turner checking in, had him picked up. But Caster in some trouble here. They worked on the leg, Ryzen did, worked on the leg early on, and now it's coming into play. He ducks out of the way. To the full arm drag, pulling on it. Picks him up. Brain Buster style suplex that time by Caster. And now Max Caster to the top. Seemingly the leg is okay here now. The big elbow drop. One, two, three. And that was a mic drop. Here is your winner, Platinum Max Caster. The acclaim, top of the chain, so I bet you know the name. Getting all the fans entertained. The acclaim. He's not done for crying out loud. That's the innovative move. He shoved his opponent's hands in their own tights and uh -huh. then stepped on the hands. Okay, so there you go. Max Caster gets the win. He is now 5-1 and one here in singles competition here at AEW and picks up another win here on Elevation. Momentum's definitely with Max Caster. Let's take a look at this week's rising star here on Elevation, Red Velvet. Growing up, my dad was a professional boxer. I was going to the gym with him and watching him train, but I always felt like I was never destined to be a boxer. I always wanted to fight. I knew I had the blood of a fighter, but boxing wasn't it. So I became a professional dancer. I started watching wrestling at nine years old with my mom and I fell in love with it. I can do entertainment, I can fight, and I can be beautiful and put my dance at the same time. Let's give it a try. And that was it. 2015, I went looking for a wrestling school and I never looked back since. I love professional wrestling. Unbeknownst to many, is Red Velvet is not completely signed at AEW. What's most exciting is when Arn Anderson presented her live on Dynamite and she pretty much dropped the mic and let us know who she was and left. Didn't wait for some glad handing and some hugs and to make it official. I'm fed up. I'm tired of getting attacked and I'm about to stir your bitch ass up. She rose to that occasion. I have all the confidence in the world in her as this Brandy and I'd love that to parlay into a full career here at AEW. I mean, talk about somebody genuinely seizing the moment in the middle of this dumb, unrelenting pandemic who was filling in for Brandy will make it clear that she's not a fill-in, that she's not a substitute, that Red Velvet is going to matter here at AEW. Oh my God, Red Velvet! Out of the sky came Red Velvet. Talk about maximizing your minutes, JR. I have experience, I have grit, I have passion, I have heart, and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna give it everything that I've got because I have the blood of a fighter. So bring me everything that you got. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing the team of Matt Rankowski and the librarian, Leva Bates. Interesting uh, team because here are two ladies who have faced each other all before in the ring, one and one against each other. And Renkowski obviously has nothing that she wants to do with Leva Bates here. And their opponents, the team of Red Velvet and Big Swole. Oh, I love this energy. This is great. Big Swole with that big time attitude. Red Velvet, 
love it. Of course, Leva Bates, the librarian, and Matty Rikowski was a late add to that tournament. In the U.S. bracket of the recent women's eliminator tournament, replaced Anna Jay, who has since had shoulder surgery. What surprises me is competitive as this women's division is, that these women are able to form any kind of a team or any semblance of cohesion to get through this. That's a great point. It is competitive. Now, Leva Bates. Nice polite handshake. I like where they're starting. No respect. Collar elbow tie up. Nice headlock. Nice and tight. Headlock takeover. Showing some wrestling skills there. there Leg go. scissor. Leva Bates quickly got out of it. Deep arm. arm drag. And right back at you. I like it. I like I like them showing their skills. I agree. Yeah, very competitive vision. I love I love seeing the women go out there and literally no holds barred and they're showing how they can do it and why they do deserve the respect that they get. And now Rinkowski, as we said. Calabasas, California. Oh, that was a little unorthodox. Is that a poke in the eye? Did you see that, I, Tony? Well, I don't think Red Red Velvet did. No. <laughs> oh, oh, well, she paid for that. Yeah, you're not getting Red Velvet. Maybe small in stature, but she got a lot of power, a lot of velocity coming out of corner. She put and, some zip on that lariat. And here's Swole. You're talking about a great athlete. We've seen her before on this program. A lot of showmanship as well. Yeah, she's one of my faves, personal faves. Yeah. I love her. Her big attitude, big swole. She may be a little over five feet, but she's eight feet in her mind. Snap mirrored her over. Wow, oh, wow. I haven't seen that cover. A diving European uppercut to the back of the head. How about that? That is, that is. Yeah. I couldn't even put that coordination together to think of that, let alone do it. That's what you call improvising your offense. Well done. Yeah, and you know what? You, you got to do that sometimes, I would think. Well, that's the thing is these new competitors, they're doing all they can to separate themselves from the herd. They want to be different. They yeah. want to be unique. And that's definitely one thing I've seen so far being here in AEW is all the different applications that these athletes are bringing to the ring. Sure. And Leva now. There's another tag. Renkowski now will come in. You know, I'm going to be that old guy that pulls him off to the side and say, hey, show me how you did that. <laughs> what do you call that thing? Yeah, there's a snap man right there. And it just shrugged off by Swole. Swole, Swole. Oh. Very colorful. Face first that time. Center down. One, two. Good hook. But only got a two cap. Big Swole's got that former military background, veteran. She's got that intensity. You know, and she digs deep and turns it up. I hope you can hear Leva that time say wrestle, talking out, calling out to her partner to wrestle. Hmm. Okay. Obviously, some, some deep seated problems. See, look at this. She's a little frustrated with her partner. Yeah. I don't think these two are on the same game page. Yeah. I don't want to be Captain Obvious here, but wow. That's that power of Big Swole. Uh, once again, a, a, a two count that time. Two ladies <laughs> who are team partners who have faced each other and had some bad blood in the past. One and one against each other in dark matches. And right now, ruling the ring here is Big Swole. Rinkowski, oh, and a split. Wow. wow. Running knee strike that time. Yeah, I would have tapped out after getting thrown into that split if that would have happened. Yeah, there. man, that, yeah, that, that, that would have been a finish. And, and look at Leva Bates. A little distract, I like it. Yeah. So now they're working a little bit as a team. They yeah. say, you know, sometimes the enemy can uh, know your friends as your enemies or something like that, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. Is that what it is? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, one of these days I'll be wise. No! Oh! Wow, there's your book. There's a late fee on that one. And she's walking out. Leva Bates is walk. She's walking out on her partner and her enemy, I guess. Drop toe hold, send her into the ropes, and Renkowski has. And Leva Bates is cheering against her partner from the stage area. One, two, and a two count. Nice kick out. 
stirring it up. Renkowski's all on her own here. She sure is. That's a bad place to be. Renkowski, a wild swing, two of them missed both. Big, or Red Velvet didn't. Red Velvet brought her right down to her size. Spinning heel kick that time by Velvet. Shotgun drop kick off the middle ropes. One, two, three. That was just desserts. The winners of this match, the team of Big Swole and Red I really like Big Swole and Red Velvet. They were on the same page and firing on all cylinders. That uh, was impressive. Yeah, I agree. They really are. Oh, oh. Oh, boy. Here comes trouble. You're not kidding. Here. That is one impressive athlete. Wow. Man. My goodness. Jade, Nyla Rose, and Vicky Guerrero right between them. If this is not an intimidating stare, I don't know what is. This is a bad news just came to town. I actually know the lady in the middle very well. She's vicious. Oh, yes, she is, and loud. Still the winners, Big Swole and Red Velvet as the other ladies decide now is not the time. Before we go to our next match, let's check in with Dasha backstage. All ego Ethan Page, tonight you face five of the Dark Order on AEW Dark Elevation. How have you prepared for him? How have I prepared for number five? Number five? The only numbers all ego cares about is his win loss record. And like you saw on Dynamite, I got my first singles victory. And tonight, I'm just adding more numbers to my win column. But I'm gonna do two things tonight. One is win. And two is a little bit of a favor for Dark Order since they don't really seem to like five in the first place. I'm gonna make sure he's not around anymore. So he'll be out of your hair, Dark Order. And for me, like I said, the only numbers I care about are the wins and I'm gonna keep racking them up. Yo, kid, FTW. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook at a combined weight of 468 pounds, the team of Absolute Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, what a powerhouse Hobbs is. A big a upper chest, those strong shoulders. It's a great team, man. A team Taz, and of course, Hook accompanying them the ringside. Certainly one of the most powerful forces, Hobbs, Starks, Taz, Hook, in all of AEW. And their opponents had a combined weight of 435 pounds, a team of Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. We saw them a week ago here. I'm pretty impressed with these yeah. guys. Good teamwork, good amateur background wrestling. Kids from the West Coast coming all the way out here to AEW to make a name for themselves. And speaking of West Coast, man, Powerhouse Hobbs from California. He just, he just too much, man. And I, I, I would think that the, the idea is to stay away from him, but there's nowhere to go here. No, he's just very explosive. Isaac's caught in the corner, or make that Royce. All right, Jarrell Nelson caught in the corner here, trying to fight his way out. This is a contest. Keep your hands up at all times. Defend yourself. Pick up. Got him hoisted up top. And just fighting his way down. Boy, he's got big powerhouse Hobbs reeling here. And Hobbs just manhandles him back to the corner. He's always got that get out of trouble card. It's called power. It's called overwhelming strength. Oh, wow! Wow! Nice counter. Whoa, in midair. And even Isaacs felt it in the corner that time. He got shot out of the sky by a howitzer. Wow, man. He just tried something, and Hobbs saw it coming and just knocked him right out of midair. We're going to see it again here in a moment. Take a look at this. Wow. Hit him Man. in the right, and he hit him into the chest that time, in the sternum, to send him down. And Ricky Stark says, no, nope, not yet. Look at the grin on Hobbs. That's more of a sneer, isn't it, almost? It is a little bit, yeah. yeah. But I can appreciate that confidence and arrogance. Yeah, and speaking of confidence and arrogance, how about this ultra-talented kid from New Orleans? Ricky Starks can do so many things. 
And he sends now Nelson back to the corner. End of the ropes. Nelson holds his ground. Oh boy, Nelson found the mark with that one. And that one it was to the chest that uppercut that time. But Ricky Starks, just a all around phenomenal athlete, can battle his way out of many predicaments a lot of guys can't because of pure athletic ability. And here's Royce Isaacson. The first time Starks now battling his way out, at least attempting to elbows to the side of the head. And another elbow, this one by Isaacs, cleared out Starks. Starks comes off with a running forearm shot. You know, Tony, Starks may be still banged up from that street fight with Darby Allen and Stank. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Oh, Brian Cage. Nice high knee lift to the chin. And we saw Hook, who's here at ringside, and we saw Powerhouse Hobbs both get involved in that match. An unforgettable match. There you see Hook at ringside. There's a kid in the formative years of his career. It's going to be a force as well. There's no question about that. And Isaacs goes down. Ricky Starks just knows how to punish him. You can order the replay of Revolution, by the way. It's available on pay-per-view. And you can see the replay and see that street fight for yourself. Into a stunner up on top. Big, Big high cross body. Yeah, one to two. And Nelson came close to getting a win that time, but Hobbs pulled him away. And Hobbs picks it up. Oh boy. Spine buster. Wow. This guy's impressive with his power and athleticism. Aubrey Edwards telling him to get out. He's going to get out on his own good time as again Nelson getting some offense going. Hook tripped him up at ringside. And Ricky Starks has him. Over the top, this could be, it is, the Rochambeau. The Rochambeau. One, two, three. I the winners of this match, the team of powerhouse Hobbs and absolute Ricky Starks. You know, I definitely got to talk to Ricky and see if he can give me a good place in New Orleans to get some beignets. Try Cafe Du Monde. Cafe Du Monde, of course. Okay, there you go. Take, take a look at Hook with the trip up here, and that just led Ricky to the, the shot, the pickup, and then the Rochambeau. And this is a hell of a move, guys. Bam! Ricky starts, powerhouse Hobbs, and Hook, who was involved with the win. And there you see the celebration going on. And we still have more to come here on Elevation. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, weighing 175 pounds, the radioactive puppy, Danny Limelight. The radioactive puppy. I love it, former US Marine Corps veteran. Like I said last week on Elevation, you know, he's part of the US Marine Corps boxing team, also a US Marine Corps martial arts drill instructor. Wow. Close quarter combat pugilistic specialist. His opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing 210 pounds, Baron Black. Baron Black still looking for his first win here in AW. He's been very successful. He's pushed some of the top rising stars to their limit, like Lee Johnson. Iron sharpens iron. Baron Black with a great counter move that time. You know, Limelight is so quick and agile, it, it would be behoove him to try to keep him off his feet and try to ground him. Also, considering that martial arts background, you know, you'll be very wary of those feet. Sure. Another reason, just uh, put him on the mat and drive him. Let's see what Baron Black does here. There you go, look at that quickness, man. Martial arts and quickness. Boy, Limelight do a lot of things, can he? Look at this. Look at the balance. Black didn't know what to do about that. He just ran towards him in there. Off the top rope, Hurricane Rana that time. That's the thing about Limelight. He likes to incorporate a lot of Lita Libre style moves. Look at that corkscrew plancha. Hey, papi, me hate Corkscrew plancha from the top. 
Limelight, just a sensational athlete. And you bet you that you had met him overseas. Yeah, I met him and uh, on the tribute to the troop things that I used to do when I used to visit our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was uh, serving as a Marine over there, and I met him a while ago. He was a fan. And it's crazy how this world works. You can go from being a fan to following your dream and becoming a star. He wrestled the very first elevation we had a week ago, losing to Jungle Boy. Five years experience, Danny Limelight. 11 years experience, Baron Black. And Black waiting for Limelight to get up. Here he comes, rolling in, spinning Lariat. That time picks him up. One, two, and he got a two count. Almost came out with a win. I appreciate that nice aggressive leg hook on the cover. Baron Black, you know, we talk so much on, on this program about uh, men trying to make their way, and women trying to make their way through the ranks in pro wrestling. And Baron Black took his life savings in 2009 to train as a pro wrestler. That's following your dreams and that him come true. That is. And he's only going to get better as he gets his shots on elevation here or dark on Tuesdays. Look at that double stomp by Limelight. Yeah, that definitely knocks the wind out of your sails. Nothing like a 200-pound guy landing right on your sternum. Mm. Hello. Mike Posey, the referee, checking on both men. Both men slow to get up on either side of the ring. Baron Black, first one come running in, and Limelight just put the elbow up. Lands on the apron. Watch out. Step up in Zaguri that time. Pretty good move by Limelight to use that momentum and flip over to set up for the kick. Here he goes up top. Nice front roll. Rolls through. Waist lock, German suplex, and Baron Black hit hard. And a kip up that time by Limelight. Baron Black caught him nicely done by Black. Look at this. Almost like a form of a Boston Crab. As the legs. And he made his way to the ring. Baron Black with a great submission hold this time. But it, to no effect. I would say right now, somewhere, Dean Malenko is pretty upset. Yeah, like a, well. That was a man of a thousand holds steal yeah, right that, there. Well, that was like a Texas Cloverleaf, kind of. It was. I believe, I believe you hit yeah. the nail right on the head there, Tony. How about that? You've been doing this a while. Yeah, boy. You're pretty good at it. Maybe one day when I grow up, I'll be good, too. You're overgrown, buddy. I'm overgrown. Whoa. That's Norton Anderson. Oh, head first. <laughs> head first, using that ring environment to his advantage. Good move by Danny Limelight. Whether it's ethical or not, who knows? Whoa, man. Running kick to the face. Hello. Double stop to the back. Man, using that bottom rope as a springboard. Yeah, but you can see Limelight. He's, he's felt the effects of this battle so far as well. He tried. He, look at this. See him? Absolutely. But you know, he's not afraid to use his environment, and he's not afraid to think outside of the box. Over the top, rolls through. There it is. Well, I believe that, if I can see it yep. from here, there it is. That is the Maurice Sanando. Uh, the Maurice Sanando. Which in Spanish means to die dreaming. The winner of this match, Danny Limelight. So Danny Limelight goes to now three and one in singles competition here, and one and one in elevation. We still have a triple main event to come tonight, including Rio Mizunami against Layla Hirsch, All Ego Ethan Page against Dark Order number five, Alan Angels, and up next, main event number one, as Ryan Nemeth, the Hollywood hunk, takes on Orange Cassidy. Let's go to the ring. Here's Justin Roberts. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Hollywood, California, weighing 208 pounds, the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Well, you can see the confidence in the Hollywood hunk. Well, that's the thing about living in Hollywood. You also have to be used to rejection. <laughs> I guess you do, right? <laughs> You're you heard no more than you are heard yes. Is Absolutely. Uh, here he is in one of our main events here this week. 
And it should be a great matchup. Contrast of styles as we go back to the one and only Justin Roberts. And his opponent from wherever, weighing whatever, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. You know, Orange Cassidy, Tony, is one of the more unique wrestlers that I've ever had a chance of watching. You know, his casual demeanor, his his several affair, whatever happens, happens. You know, and when he pulls his hands out of those pockets, the tempo changes. But imagine to be that good where you can literally put your hands in your pockets and defeat your opponent. Well, I think, you know, I've always, I didn't know what to make of him when I first saw him, but then again, I realized that it's, it's kind of a ploy, he kind of lulls you to sleep at times, thinking that he's not into the match. Then boom, he explodes. He explodes, and I think it's a great, you know, we've always heard the, the rib back in the day that, oh, the guy is so good, he can wrestle with a broomstick. It's kind of a play on that where Orange Cassie is so good, he can wrestle with his hands in his pockets. Right. All right, here we go. Ryan Nemeth and Orange Cassidy, and of course, Orange Cassidy and uh, Chuck Taylor have made that challenge to Miro and Kip Sabian for one more match. Well, that feud is going on, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, when you've got uh, a guy like Miro in your corner, you've got to be the favorite. But here we go. And look at that. Not a bad move by the Hollywood Hulk to try to take a quick good no, takedown. Definitely take him down, grind him down. That's a smart move on Nemeth's part. Uh, he knew what was coming. He was going for the uh, hands in the pockets. And Nemeth with a great waist lock takedown again. That's good strategy on Nemeth there. You know, if you take away Cassie's ability to move and keep him grounded and use your superior strength that Nemeth has, he can probably create a good advantage here. Nemeth is quite an athlete. Comes from a family of athletes. Yes, he does. Look at that innovative. Actually put his hands in his pocket to get out of the amazing. Gotta love that. Innovative. Bryce Remsburg is our referee. Ryan Nemeth was Ohio Valley Wrestling Rookie of the Year in 2010. He's played rugby in college, has an extensive amateur background, and has been a stuntman in Hollywood as well. And right now, look at, look at that. Cassidy is just so quick and so fluid. You think he really doesn't know what he's doing, but he does. And oh, he definitely does. And the taunting there with the ankle crossed over the knee, hands behind the head. That's just saying, Nemeth, no matter what you do, I'm better than you. Good shot. I wasn't sure his eyes were open or not there. He just rolled out oh, the play. Oh, this is too much. Imagine how frustrating Nemesis is getting right now. And that's what he wants. And you can see it on the face here of the Hollywood hunk. You know, it's like he went out for Romeo and Juliet and didn't get cast. Yeah, it rolls in as Cassidy. There we oh, go. Oh, there we go. Hands in the pockets. Nemeth was trying to stop that the entire match, and he just. What an insult. That's, you know, Cassidy right now is saying, Nemeth, I can put my hands in my pocket and beat. There it is. And roll away from, look at that. Nice drop kick, nice kip up. Hands in the pocket. I don't think I could do a kip up if I held onto a crane. Well, there, I think I've seen you do a kip up, didn't you? Yeah, that was a long time long, ago. Long time ago. Looked like he was going for the orange punch there and a pick up by Nemeth. Nice. Nice belly to back. A little of that frustration coming out here with Nemeth. Now we understand that the Orange Chuck Miro Kip match will be fought with arcade video games stationed around the ring. Oh, really? Yeah. Exciting. Exciting. So we're looking forward to that matchup to see what goes on there because video games are such a big part of Miro and, and Kip Sabian. And well, it all started when uh, the best friends destroyed that video console of Miro's. and. Kip yeah. Sabian and yeah, Miro's very passionate about his gaming. I've I've actually gamed in the past with Miro. He's quite the quite the serious competitor, though. He's a little hard on game remotes when he gets upset. I, I bet he is. He tends to crush them in his hands. Big whip in by the Hollywood Hunt. Do a little bit of posing. A little bit of showboating here. I don't know if I would take that risk with a competitor like Orange Cassidy. Well, I guess he's trying to show up Orange Cassidy, who did a pretty good job of being nonchalant early in this match, and now here's the Hunt with some uh, knee lifts into the midsection. And Love those nice solid knee lifts. Anything you can do to disrupt an opponent's ability to catch his breath and keep his muscles oxygenated. Just knock the wind at him. We've all had the wind knocked out of us. We know how that feels. And a 
takeover that time by Nemeth. Nemeth working on the left arm. He got that arm caught up in those knees, and now Nemeth seeing that he has an opportunity here. We'll work on that left arm here of Orange Cassidy. And again, now he uses the orange punch, but he used that right hand for the orange punch, not the left hand. So let's see if this strategy works here for the Hollywood Hawk. Good to have you with us. And it's been a great second week here of Elevation, taking a look at the young stars up and coming like Ryan Nemeth, 10 years in the game, two and three here in AEW. Orange Cassidy at 17 and 10 in AEW. Cassidy a veteran though, he's been around a number of years. That's one of the great things about Orange Cassidy, he has great sensory perception, sensory awareness in the ring. And he's so quick, up on top, cross body block. Orange Cassidy sends down the Hollywood Hawk. Ducks a clothesline. Watch out. He's got him hooked. And oh, pulled, nice. Yeah, pulled down the arm. I thought maybe he was going to try a ripcord. Larry at that time, Cassidy, but not. And Nemeth continues here to work on the arm to much success. And there's a hammerlock applied, pulling up. Just, you know, people say, oh, it's just a hammerlock. But, Paul, that thing is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. that can this, hurt this you, This hammerlock will definitely get your attention. Yes, it will. Look at that. It, getting some nice. added leverage on it. Yeah, that just really cranks the shoulder blade. It lifts the shoulder blade off the shoulder and torques the joint. And it feels like any second your shoulder's just going to pop out of your joint. And uh, to feel that kind of pressure is definitely uncomfortable. Yeah, that's why the hammerlock slam has been one of the most uh, famous maneuvers in wrestling for years because it's a combination slam, hammerlock, putting all the pressure on the joint. And now, as Cassidy gets to the ropes, Nemeth wants him to get up here. Cassidy in a lot of pain, but yeah. he is so quick. Nice drop kick, very athletic on Nemeth's part. Yeah. But, you know, that's the strategy. That's why you do that hammerlock slam, because you want to take away an opponent's weapon. When they lose a limb, they're less likely to be able to grapple and counter. Nice! That was a great counter by Orange Cassidy. Into a DDT. Cassidy with that left arm has to His hook the other one. one. Weak. Yep, there's a nice kick out by Nemeth. You know, he couldn't hook the cover as solid right. as he wanted to because of that injured left arm. He wanted to reach across the body with the left across arm. Across the body, put as much weight and body contact as possible on the cover. Could so, not do it. Could not do it. So Nemeth's strategy actually saved him from maybe a possible pin, getting pinned. So here we go again, Orange Cassidy. Oh, that time Nemeth timed it perfectly. Nice drop kick. I like that nice smack with those yeah. boots hit him in the chest. Cassidy looking for that dive in DDT, but that's what happened in a rolling DDT of his own. That time by Nemeth and a Good two. kick out. And so Nemeth now, after that attempt from the top, trying to reverse neck breaker, neck breaker here maybe, and... Looked like Cassidy will go try a mousetrap. One, two, three, and he got it. There it is. Nice, good counter. Now we're doing this match. Freshly squeezed. Orange Cassidy. Cassidy, so many ways to win. Beach break, the orange punch, but that time it was what he calls the mousetrap that tied him up, and Nemeth is going to get that reverse neck breaker in anyway. And that brings Chuck Taylor out. Sticking together, friends here, and he is just hammering away now here on Nemeth. Chuck's really putting the boots to him. J.D. Drake has come in. And J.D. Drake lays out Ryan Nemeth. Or lay, lays out Chuck Taylor. And helping out Ryan Nemeth. Well, at least he did get some help there, but it was something that was instigated and started here by Nemeth. Well, I appreciate Nemeth keeping the guy standing next to you that has less of a tan, so you look like you're in better shape. Well, it is a difference in tans there. I, I would agree. Your winner, though, by the way, Orange Cassidy, here in one of our main events here on Elevation. Coming up next, our second main event is going to be Ethan Page going up against Dark Order 5, Alan Angels, coming up next on Elevation. This match is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, weighing 225 pounds, all ego, Ethan Page. Well, Ethan Page made quite a debut at Revolution recently when he was a part of that Face of the Revolution ladder match. 
And here he is making his debut here on Elevation. Join the Dark Order. And his opponent from the keep, weighing 175 pounds, Allen Five Angels. Coming down with the entire Dark Order, including negative one. Who we saw earlier tonight here out with Ty Conti. He's going to fire up Allen Angels number five, and here we go. All the tenants. Oh, good. Negative one loves to be in that ring. Well, he, he loves the spotlight, doesn't he? Yeah, he's not afraid of the camera. That's no, sure. not at all. Always an intimidating factor when you have all these members of the Dark Order out. Yeah, it's not like it's the Babysitter's Club up there. No. Okay, here we go. Should be interesting for five in here. Ethan Page has a black belt in Taekwondo and karate. He earned that at 16 years old. Then gave it up to pursue a career in professional wrestling. Handsome devil, isn't he? Yeah, uh, well, he thinks so. Very proud of his Macedonian heritage. You know, of course, that's where Alexander the Great was from. How about that? Yeah, it's a pretty good company. This history lesson. I'm from you. South Carolina. I don't know who's famous from there. <laughs> Excellent. I think just me. Okay. I'm trying to think here who's famous from South Carolina. Just yeah. Give me a second. Me and William Perry. Okay, there you go. You in the fridge. Me in the fridge. Absolutely. So the fridge and the whole kitchen. <laughs> oh, well, there goes Alan Angels over the top. Four-year experience. And certainly the Dark Order right now is enjoying a, a lot of success in the ring. I mean, with John Silver and Alex Reynolds. It's a pretty big faction. Yeah. You can't help it. Have some cylinders fire so you can get some wins in. Colt Cabana's had the success, and of course, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson, one of the best tag teams in the world. Look at that. Ethan Page just threw him off that time. And look, he's talking to himself now, man. Yeah, Colt Cabana's preparing the dark order for tax season. <laughs> and down he goes, and Ethan nice Page missed. Now oh, Angels did not. Karana. I like how the fact they, they had Allen Angels put that mask on. And it, it just gave him a new identity. It, it gave him focus. It, I mean, they talked about joining the Dark Order, changing your life, and it really has changed his career. I mean, it really has. Look at this dropkick. That's kind of like a cult following, you know? If it gets yeah. in your brain, if it gives you the confidence to get it done, you know, if it works for you, then well, they good don't for you. We've seen them become a family, though. You don't like them calling them so they're, they're a family, right? So I, I get that now. And a running shoulder block that time. You know, it's funny, Tony. The first time I saw uh, Alan Angels wrestling, he was wrestling Kenny Omega on Dynamite. And right. Nobody thought he was in the ring. Should be in the ring with Kenny Omega. Sure. And now look where he is in the dark order. Made a very, very quick impression. You're Number right. Number five is alive. And that was uh, almost a year ago. That was in yep. April of 2020. I've had my eye on this for a while. You should have because Angels can really go. And he's very put to the test here by Page, a pickup and. Nice count. Oh, oh it's yes. A Russian leg sweep out of that. Angels floats across, hooks a leg, but doesn't get the three. Page right now trying to get a breath, figure out his surroundings. Hit. And it was a bait and switch. Ooh, brutal hit on that second rope. He caught that right in the face. I don't and think five knows where he is right now. No, Ethan's got the advantage though, but he's obviously he's he's found out what Kenny Omega discovered a, about a year ago. Oh boy, into a backbreaker. Right across the knee. I was that worried time. that was gonna be some kind of a DDT attempt for a second. Back to the attack once again. Big waist lock. Pulling up here on the on the rib cage, pulling up on it after that back breaker, working on the the ribs again, the back here. Smart psychology. Attack the ribs, keep putting pressure on those ribs. Everything that hurts, it makes it harder to take a breath. 
harder to get your coordination, harder to think. You make mistakes. Good way to good strategy. You know, Paul, we're seeing more and more. We've seen it in this show tonight. We're seeing more and more guys go to the mat. Yeah, it's that, smart. Yeah, it really is. I mean, we've seen there are the high flying maneuvers. I get it from the top to the floor, the tope suicidas, the kicks. But when you go to the mat and grab a hold, I know it's old school, but it seems like a lot of guys are going back to that. Hey, I am my pain, but the old there's no old school. There's no school better than the old school. But when you're grounded, you're on the mat, you have control over your opponent. When you're doing the high flying moves, though they're fancy and they're cool to look at it and everybody gasps, there's so much potential for a misfire, a miscalculation, or getting hurt. And sometimes the high risk just isn't worth the reward. Right. I mean, you know, I should know I was a big time high flyer, you know. <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face. So my question it, it, was it smart for Allen Angels to trade shots for the bigger man. I mean if, if someone would have traded shots with you I, I would think that would have been a mistake. Well you know I've traded shots with Floyd May Floyd Mayweather as right. well. So sure. I mean sometimes if you're a smaller guy trading shots with a bigger guy it does work to your advantage if you get in more hits. But then again sometimes it only takes one and it's done. That's right. A pick up here. Oh wow. One two. No! Good kick out. A little of that Macedonian uh, heritage kicking out there. Alexander the Great never was defeated in battle. Do you know that his military strategies from back then are taught in military colleges today? I did not know that. Yep. Wow. Conquered the known world by 24 years old. You're just full of history lessons. Yeah, you know, this big head isn't just a hat rack. The wing snapper, that's what he was looking for. Up on the shoulder, good counter. Waist lock, back elbow. Whoa, oh, boy. spinning kick to the side of the head. Ooh. Almost like a tilt-a-whirl slam like a there. Gut wrench tilt-a-whirl. Yep. And Mike Posey says two count now. Page is laying in here to Mike Posey, our referee. But sometimes you get frustrated and you don't think the ref counted fast enough or started the count early enough. Sometimes that can be a distraction. You just really got to stay in it and stay stay focused on your opponent. This is match two of our triple main event. Don't forget we still have one more match to go here tonight on AEW Elevation in our triple main event with Rio Mizunami and Layla Hirsch. Here it comes. Oh, going for the ego's edge. Good yep. counter by five. Hang on to the ropes. Hang on to the turnbuckle. Allen nice. Angels. Ducked out of the way, showing his oh. quickness. The heel that time hit Ethan Page, and Page runs right over him. Yeah, I don't think Allen caught him cleanly enough with that spinning back kick. You know what? Here he's got him up. This could be the. This is the ego's yep, edge, ego's and edge. there it is. Wow. wow. He got some air time on that one. One, two, three. Forearm across the chin. And the winner of this match. No more fouls. Oh, ego, Ethan Page. So Ethan's now two and one here in AEW. And of course, his only loss came in that ladder match, the face of the revolution ladder match, where he made his surprise entrance into AEW. Let's take a look once again here at this. Look at that hang time, Tony. I mean, five must have felt like he was just floating in air. Right. Went up, out, and then down hard. All ego, Ethan Page is your winner here on Evolution. And he is calling for the microphone. And look at this. He, Justin Roberts going to hand it to him. He made Justin walk the steps. Oh, Justin needs to get his steps in. Okay. Well. Really, Justin? Really? You see how hard I just worked? You expect me to come down to your level and take the microphone from oh, you? Come on. You man. come to All Ego and you give it to me. Wow. Oh. Now. Everybody watching at home is great, and I'm gonna get to you in a second. How about a little message for my future competition watching on the outside? You don't gotta give me any money. You don't gotta give me any praise. But I want all of you to know you just got a lesson in how to be the best professional wrestler on the house, on all ego, you're welcome. And for everybody watching at home, 
get used to this beautiful face and all the winds getting racked up for all ego because I'm going to be here for a very, very long time. Well, well he definitely is all ego. He He's, believes in himself, man. He's not lacking confidence. No, and you got to have it here in All Elite Wrestling. All ego, Ethan Page, the winner on Elevation. And now our final main event of three is going to be Rio Mizunami against Layla Hirsch one on one here on Elevation. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Nagoya, Japan, Rio Mizunami. Number five ranked contender in the women's division, a lady who went all the way to the top of the Eliminator Tournament. And then, of course, went up against Ikado Shida. Shida with a big win over this lady, but there's no question that Rio Mizunami at six or one in AEW has made her presence known. This is pretty cool, too. Exactly. Her opponent, originally from Moscow, Russia, legit Layla Hirsch. Big fan of Layla Hirsch, I am. She's an aggressive go-getter. Yes, she is. Five years of Midland High School amateur wrestling experience. Raised in Hillsboro, New Jersey. Earned a wrestling scholarship to Life University right outside of Atlanta, but instead opted for a pro wrestling career. By the way, if you want to see the women's world title match between Mizunami and Cheetah, you can see the replay, the encore presentation, so to speak, on pay-per-view. Here we go. So two entirely different styles here, really. Yeah, Rio's coming here with a good bit of momentum with that six and one record here in AEW. So we're gonna see how Layla stacks up against her. I like Layla's grit though. She's got a good grit. And she's got that great amateur background that serves her well when she applies it. Oh man, there you go. Get her up again. And not only that, she has. You know, I, I, I don't know what they call them now, but we used to call them shooter boots. Shooter boots. That's it. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you knew. You knew. I knew exactly. Yeah. She's got shooter boots on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Those boots meant that that person can stretch you. Yeah, it can yeah. stretch you. They That's gonna... Exactly right. Yeah. I think Mizunami's only loss was to the AEW Women's Champion. That's correct? right. The only loss in AEW for. Well, if you're gonna lose to anyone, losing to the champion still makes you pretty tough. Okay, so Mizunami's gonna hit the ropes. Layla, oh! Oh, oh I think Layla set her up for that she one. She sure did. One step ahead. Nice move by Hirsch. Oh, and down goes Hirsch on a shoulder block. What was a shoulder block? That was a shoulder run through. The shoulder run through, shoulder <laughs> tackle. Oh, they're gonna do it again. Wow. <laughs> Layla Hirsch now trying to rebound out of that. I'm sure her bell got rung a little bit hitting yeah. that mat that hard. Oh, wow, Layla calling her out. Yeah, is that all? I don't know. Well, that one found its mark. Yeah, yeah she didn't ask for a third one. I don't know if I'm ever a big fan of standing there and letting my opponent hit me to prove how tough I am. Yeah, I, you know, we see that uh, a number of times, and, and every time it happens, I'm like, Sometimes Why? it just, I guess, fires people up, right? If you get I, hit, I hard. guess, but you know, I just, you know, I go by the old Queensberry rules: protect yourselves at all times. Okay. You know, it's a good philosophy. I mean, what do you know? I've only been around a few years, so yeah. I'll learn something someday. I like it. You remember the Queensberry rules? You like that? <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did a little boxing for a year. I took a year <laughs> off from professional wrestling. Did a little boxing in '07. Uh -huh. uh, got to spar with Oliver McCall, actually. Wow, man. Is there yeah. anything you haven't done? Um, I have not flown the space shuttle yet. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. And into the corner. I will tell you a funny story, though. I did actually try to pay $30,000 to learn how to be a helicopter pilot, uh, and I couldn't fit in a helicopter. Uh, well, there you go. Yeah, there you go. $30,000. Yeah. Okay. 
That was a good thing, too, because I didn't have 30 grand on a credit card. It would definitely failed. So. <laughs> Mizunami just turned the tables on Layla here. And Layla is in dire straits. And Mizunami just laid it in. That's one thing about Rio Mizunami. Lady who has held six different championships, three singles titles, and a Joshi, Japanese Joshi promotion. So she's a seasoned vet and knows how to lay it in. And that's what she's doing to legit Layla Hirsch right now. Right, and she definitely put the ground pound on Layla, but the thing that I want Layla to try to do, what'd be good for her to keep in her strategy is to take advantage of her amateur background. You know, I mean, right now she's in a bad position, but yeah. she's not standing up trading chops. Right. You know, yeah, she's Layla. got those shooter boots. Yeah, Layla. She earned them. Use them. That's right. She earned them. Cross face. Oh, so. that, that rear, that lower floating rib spot. That's a terrible shot to get kicked in. Terrible. He's an army is just tough. You know, that's a whole Japanese strong style thing. You know, they train like that in the dojos. Right. In the hot jojos. They're whacking each other with boards and kendo sticks. And yeah, it's a it's a different mindset, you know, different culture. Headbutt, and as you can see, both women are reeling on that one. Yeah. One thing I learned in my career is to never headbutt a Samoan. Mm. Even though you're a giant, right? The Samoan skull is a lot stronger. Yeah, you're not kidding, it is. And and Layla, let's see what she's going to come up with. Another headbutt that time to the midsection. Now she puts the leg over. Interesting to see what type of strategy. She, well, maybe we'll never know. No, it might have been a good thing that that yeah. didn't happen. Because whatever she's doing looked pretty dangerous. Oh, here she goes. And maybe I spoke too soon. I, oh, my goodness. Uh, amazing. Uh, Hurricane Rana off of the top. Layla with a running knee strike. And Mizunami is wobbling. There we go. There's that nice amateur yeah. background. Great German. Yeah, release German suplex. And Hirsch all letting her opponent get to her feet, which is surprising. You know what? She's got this. She's got up. Great move over and cross arm breaker oh. attempt. Well, she, Mizunami's actually blocking that by keeping her fingers together. Right. She's keeping her hands locked. She's protecting herself. So you know she's got something to get to the ropes. Hold's yeah. got to be broken. Boy, that's a great counter, I can tell you that. Yeah. As you said, interlocking the fingers and then getting up and getting the ropes. Yeah, but the, still, the, you can see some pain in that arm still. Oh, yeah. yeah, the ropes are your friend in those situations. And he's a Nami with forearm shots from both sides. And the right arm is still hurting. Big wind up. Wow, big wind up on that one. She brought it from Nebraska. And, Picked up speed through Missouri and let it fly in North Carolina. And now here in Florida, going to try to end it all. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. And not yet. Boy, she, she telegraphed that, allowed Layla to get up. And Layla's taking full advantage of this. Wow, oh, boy, her is, is laying them in now. She's laying them in. Oh, then she went down. That's. Man, you know that trading game sometimes it doesn't work out too well. Well, there's nice the leg drop. Big leg drop. One, two, got a two count. Well, she used that big leg drop from the top rope to win her matches. Yeah, that head and arm triangle that, that actually Layla just got out of. Luckily, uh, she used that in the first round of the tournament. That arm and head triangle. Right. That's a great hold. If you can clamp it in, sink it in tight, you can use your shoulder to help choke them out. It's all that carotid artery in the side of the neck. You know, I have a medical degree, too. Team Medical. I actually have a T-shirt that says Team Medical. Two count. Layla, who's finished off her last three opponents. Wow. Look at that breaker. power. And Mizunami just showing power, still favoring that right arm, though. Oh, it's been under pressure right now. I'm sure that's hurting. She cannot stand up. Gets up to her knees. Layla sends her down again in a two. Uh -oh. oh, she pulled her up by the hair and slaps her in the face, and she goes running through her again. Hook the leg, Layla. Hook the leg. Heck of a feature bout here on elevation. Picks her up. Oh, drops her on her head. Could get a win this time. One, two. Oh, look at me. What a great counter that time. 
That's that head and arm triangle choke. That's the one she used the first round of the women's tournament. She's got that locked in deep, Tony. That, that could be it for Layla. Layla is going to That's tip it. out. The winner of this match, Rio Mizunami. The call ball. That's how she won the first round of the tournament. And Mizunami now goes to seven and one and continues her rise in the ranks here in AEW in the women's division. For Great Paul fight White, by Layla Hurst, too. Big fight by Layla Hurst. Paul White, it's Tony Schiavone. See you next time at Levation.